What's up, everyone? We are back with another card, fellas. Shorty, he's Chris. I'm Matt. We're talking about sports cards. We're talking about the hobby. And today, more specifically, we're talking about grading, including one of the major companies that does card grading. We're talking about PSA. And Chris, it was an end of a era, so to speak, this week. My last PSA order that was at $12 per card entered stage seven, which is quality assurance check number two, which means those cards that have been at PSA for over a year are coming back to me soon and I should have grades. But man, this feels like the good old days. $12 per card to get graded at PSA. And we're going to explain why those numbers are shifting, things are happening, what we think is going to happen. But man, you remember that, Chris, back when we could send cards in for what was the lowest? $8.88. That was that, that was, was the, the lowest. lowest. Yeah. That was well, in June of 2020. We were doing those uh, quarterly specials, all the 80s baseball cards, $8.88. I actually got some movement on my last uh, inexpensive order as well. I shipped it out of my house March 1st. Uh, I actually put the sub in, I think, in, in late February. So I still got them for 12 bucks, And uh, they entered the order in the mid-April. And it, it's been grading for about three months. And this week, it went into assembly. So uh, we're making some headway there. We'll see how long it stays in assembly. But it's at least made it one further step. Uh, those complete through dates right now uh, for the value modern are showing uh, complete through the end of February. And I think about 95% done through March. So um, it should be interesting to see how mm -hmm. that kind of goes. And I would guess that they're going to be wrapping this stuff up. And then again, they did not take any more cards for a while once you get to the end of March. So they are, uh, you know, obviously that goes by entered date. So right. to ship my stuff out. Uh, basically right around March 1st, the enter date was April, April 18th or something like that. So my guess is the people who sent orders in and again, the price went up March 1st. So there are probably a little bit fewer, uh, orders that went in, but again, they kept coming in. That's why they ended up shutting things down. They raised the price open to slow it down. It mm -hmm. didn't. Um, so I would guess that they'll start hitting. And I think I saw somewhere this week that the backlog at PSA was down to around 3 million. And it was at 1.12 million. So yes, they are working through it. And I would guess probably by you know mid June, I would think that they they'll be about done. So here's yes, and I here's here's the speculation based on what I have as well. So I have a twenty dollar card per card order and a twenty five dollar per card order that was entered in the middle of May, and so I think probably that was the last order one of the last orders that started to come in before the shutdown. Mm -hmm. And so I think those are what, uh, you know, those are, those are what's left. And like you said, they're moving through these cards and by June, they're going to have this figured out as far as, um, you know, what's next. I assume they already have it figured out. June is when they'll probably announce it. I think July, August is when they'll implement it. Um, they are definitely working through the backlog. Um, looking at the numbers, and this is from gemrate.com. Uh, PSA set a record in March with the number of graded cards that they did that worked through. And it was uh, almost a million. It was 987,000 cards were um, graded through their system. So um, that was a record. Now you look at April numbers, which just came out. Numbers are down, so that tells you that the backlog is starting to diminish, starting to get smaller. In April, they graded 826,000 cards, so we're looking at a 150,000 card decline. And if we look at where they're at in May, in early May, they have graded 128,000 cards so far in the month of May. So if you keep that pace going throughout the whole month of May, you're looking at grading anywhere between 650,000 and 700,000 cards. So again, that's another decline of about 150,000 cards. So that tells me that the month to month decline is 
means they're going through the backlog. So by June, they will get through all of our orders, the ones that uh, have been there for over a year, your cards, my cards. Um, I assume I'll get mine in June or July, the ones I was talking about that were entered in May, um, because they're going to have more people readily available as these backlog starts to disappear to be able to grade. So they're going to be able to get through those pretty quickly. Um, the other significant developments were the most graded cards from uh, last month were um, basketball with 262,000 cards. Um, then it went with Pokemon. Um, baseball cards are just around 200,000. And then it goes to football with 132,000. And then it's soccer with 27,000. And then hockey is fifth with 22,000. But let's get back to the backlog conversation. So right now, they're looking to possibly grade anywhere between 60, six, 650,000 and 700,000 this month. And they're going to get through this backlog pretty quick, Chris. Um, I have an opinion that something significant is going to come out of PSA fairly soon here as far as what's next. Um, what are your thoughts when you hear those numbers? Yeah, I think that the numbers are going down just because those boxes are smaller. I th you know, when we were sending cards in at nine bucks a card, you know, we were sending in 130, 140. And I'm sure there were guys and girls out there sending 500,000, you know, 500 to 1,000 cards at a time. And, you know, at, at 12 bucks a card, the orders get a little bit smaller. And then at 20 and $25 a card, the orders get smaller. And now they're working through these $50 a card, uh, yes. you know, submissions that are going through right now. And those are getting smaller. So they're just processing more boxes that have fewer cards in them. So I think it just takes longer to go through all that stuff rather than when you have an order that has 200 cards in it. They all go in the same box. They're all going shipped out in the same box. You know, it's just easier to work through those things. So I think they're just going through boxes that have fewer cards in them, and that's slowing. It's bringing that that pace down. Um, but I agree with you. I think that uh, things are going to change uh, probably mid to late summer. I think that, uh, you know, price is going to go down. You know, where that number settles, I don't know. I think that, you know, PSA spent a lot of money on – increasing the size of their facility, increasing mm -hmm. the size of their workforce. And they're going to need to keep those people busy and keep that that facility filled. I and mean, they, they don't want, you know, we're all, everybody's calling for, you know, a zero backlog, but that's bad for business for PSA. I and mean, obviously a backlog of 12 million is really bad for business too, but I think they want cards there so that there's never a point where their employees are sitting there doing nothing. I mean, they, they need cards to come in. Um, I did hear, uh, you know, earlier this week, eBay is now going to do authentication for graded cards, mm -hmm. which a lot of people are kind of think that's pretty weird and, and probably unnecessary, but there definitely have been plenty of reports out there about fake slabs. So yeah. maybe it is a good thing. The guys from Breaker Culture were saying uh, it was going to be a $2,000 uh, minimum on that. And they did some research saying that uh, I think in April there was about 3,000 cards that were sold uh, in PSA slabs that had uh, that was sold for 3,000 or more. And I think in March, though, it was 5,000. So let's just say it's 5,000. Mm -hmm. You know, is that really going to keep employees? You know, that's basically, you know, maybe seven per, or not even seven. It's, it's, it's like 2% of their capacity, less than that, actually. It's 1% of right. their capacity. So is that really going to keep their workforce going? No. I mean, it's it's nice for them. It's probably a little piece of business for them. And they can probably move through that stuff fairly quickly. Um, but they're definitely going to have to start bringing cards in at a higher rate than they are right now just to be able to stay busy. So my thought is this, and I hope I'm not giving many ideas. I'm sure they're smarter than I am. <laughs> I think what's going to happen is that you're going to, instead of doing a lottery, you're going to have to be a member to be able to submit cards. I think, uh, you know, everyone will get a monthly allocation. So maybe they'll have a, you know, a membership that you're going to pay $60 for. And maybe that means you can send 50 cards in a month. And that's going to be your limit, which I think will be a great thing. And I think that would be something that people mm -hmm. would like. Um, 
I think they're going to get smart though too, and they're going to say what we're going to do is you know for that sixty dollar a year membership, you can send in fifty cards for twenty five bucks a card. They may also say we're going to have another tier. You know, maybe that's the bronze tier. They're going to have a silver tier for two hundred dollars. You'll be able to send in a hundred cards, and maybe you'll get a little bit better price. And then a gold tier, and they're going to make that. Like maybe they'll make that five hundred dollars a month, and or five hundred a year, and you can send in, you know more cards at a little bit lower right. price and i think that's what's going to happen that's my that's my prediction they're going to have a tiered level you'll have to be a member to send in cards and the higher tier you are you'll get a little bit better price and a little bit higher maximum i absolutely 100 agree with you on the uh, notion that the uh, collectors club memberships are going to go up if you want to um, submit cards at a lower price. I think there's going to be some offsetting of costs there. Um, they're going to really cater to the true hobbyist, I believe. I don't think they're um, going to be priced for flippers, um, even though I still think there will be op opportunities for flipping that that you can make some money on, but not nearly the the um, return on the investment that you're seeing before. Like we were just talking about $8, $9 for a card. Um, mm -hmm. I think 25 will be um, kind of the starter number. And maybe if you're a, a super collector that's sending in thousands of cards, you know, in a, in a, in a month, maybe it's, it's 20, maybe it even gets down to 15. If you're talking about the, uh, the gold tier. And I do think I I'm right there in agreement with you. I think there will be um, levels that you, you can buy into and um, they want to keep us casual uh, hobbyists around. I think you and I would be bronze, you know, and then there's the guys who, who run the shops and be gold. And, you know, the silvers might be the, the people who, who are um, optimistic that they're going to be, you know, making a lot of money, but you never know. Um, $25 for a card to get graded is still pretty pricey. Um, when you look at some of the cards that were sent in, it's clearly the ones we sent in for eight, nine dollars. There's no way in, in in hell I'm sending some of those cards in for twenty five. So that's a little bit of quality control by PSA as well. Um, but they're still going to get a lot of business with twenty five. I mean, I think when we look back before they shut down, we were sending in cards for the um, ultra modern cards those were $25. You know, those were the, um, those were the cards that people were sending in and paying $25 for. Um, so I think there's, I think, I think there's uh, definitely changes on the horizon. Um, one of the dates uh, of notes is, um, is middle of August. And the reason I say that is for a lot of people that have um, club memberships or collector club memberships. Now they kept extending your membership until because of the shutdown and they have it shutting off i think at like august uh you know 16th or something middle of august is when i'd have to renew if i wanted to come back so i would expect um they will have news before um, that date i think that's probably pretty similar for a lot of people that date being the expiration date of their um, collectors club membership and you'll have to decide if you want to re-up and um, what you're going to have to do is, you know, for for uh, for picking your your um, your tier, um, I think the allocation of the lottery um, is still a possibility. Um, I see every Tuesday and Thursday they send me an email and say, you know, want to jump in the jump in the lottery. Here you go. And if I don't have cards that I need to send in, I don't get in. And if I do, I do jump in the lottery. So. I, I think there could be some of that um, still around, whether it be for even better prices, or maybe that's how you get into like the collector specials for the month. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think that allocation will still have some sort of um, some sort of feature in in the new PSA. But um, I definitely think uh, you know you and I are right there in agreement. Changes are coming and. It's going to be met with a lot of uh, uh, skepticism, maybe some optimism. But um, as you know, um, and I know very well, there are a lot of critics of PSA. But I will say this about PSA. 
since Nat Turner has taken them over and become the CEO, there's been a lot of positive buzz and they're doing PR really well. I don't know if you saw Twitter recently, but Nat Turner tweeted something that I'm going to read here. Two of the best basketball cards in existence were submitted yesterday raw at PSA from the same person. I can't believe it. Didn't know that they had been pulled all these years. So there's a tease. Again, that's PR. That's public Mm -hmm. relations. That gets you excited. That gets you paying attention to PSA. And that's how they stay relevant. That's how they're going to keep people around. I think the biggest question, Chris, is when all this goes down, what happens to SGC? That's that's what I wanted to bring up. But first, I want to say this to Nat Turner in my best Judge Smales voice. Well... (laughs) We're waiting. <laughs> that was one of the memes, actually, that was in the comments below. And so, right, we, um, we, we, we want to know what you're talking about. But yeah, that's actually what I wanted to talk don't about. Don't tease us, man. Right. <laughs> SGC in the last 30 days uh, has done about 94,000 cards. Beckett's done 79,000. That number we keep throwing around, and we've done it on a few different shows, is about 25 bucks, which is kind of where we think PSA is going to land. But with the increased capacity, with the increased workforce, do they just say screw it and let's go fifteen bucks and try to bury SGC and back it for good? And I mean, they are now you know PSA is now a publicly uh, collectors universe is publicly traded, and this might be an opportunity with a clean slate and with a clean you know warehouse. For them just to be like, you know what, we are going to bury these guys once and for all. And and they potentially could do it if they can grade cards with all of this capacity that they've built over the last two years at a lower price than SGC and Beckett. Like, why would you send it there if you could get it cheaper through PSA and the value of the resale on the card is still better? Yeah. I think if that happens, if we see anything lower than SGC currently is right now you they're done they're 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 going to be they're going to be squashed by the big guy and psa is by far the uh the the titan of this industry and um i would i would guess that they have that plan in their mind this is a this is their opportunity to take complete control of the hobby and and squash everybody else. Beckett to me is the most interesting. I mean, what a prominent name in the hobby and they just, they they can't figure out their grading and they're stuck. Now they're falling behind um, SGC and they have for a long time. So um, yeah, I think, I think you bring up an excellent point. Do you undercut them knowing that you have this capacity, you have this workforce and you have this facility just ready to take this onslaught of cards. Um, it, it's, it's an intriguing, it's an intriguing idea. And we'll find out how cutthroat you know, PSA is, but they are a publicly traded company. And yeah. so like the bottom line matters right. and, you know, s- stakeholders and shareholders, they matter now. And so you have to start, you have to start producing much more than, than you did in the past. And that means gobbling up businesses and spitting them out. So, um, if that happens, you know, say la vie, farewell, I think, SGC. Um, Beckett might still have some some staying power just because it has the longevity. But as far as a grading company, I, I, I don't see them. I don't see them surviving. Yeah. Yeah. The SGC has really thrived over the last year. And I, I really honestly would hate to see that happen because I agree. I good to have you know another competitor in the market and i think it's good to have another option but you know they have thrived off of this psa backlog and all the bad press that it, that it received you know they've been able to slide in there and they definitely are very vocal on their social media media channel saying you know you sent it to us you're gonna get your card back in a month yes so you know that's been a really good selling feature for them but i think a lot of it, what it comes down to is right now people can't get their card to PSA. And if they can, it's $50. Well, heck, I can just send it to the SGC for 25 bucks. Yeah. So, you know, if PSA really, like you said, really want to go and get 
aggressive on this, uh, there there definitely would be an opportunity. And whether or not they want to do that, we'll find out, I think, in the next probably four or five months. Yeah, and the one difference between SGC and Beckett, I think, too, they you know they don't have you know collectors club memberships. You you can go on SGC and you can submit a card. You don't have to be a member. You know right. you don't have to pay a monthly fee or a yearly fee. So that's different as well. So it, it's just you know added cost for PSA, but you know it's still undeniable. The prices you get in return for PSA are going to be higher than those other two grading companies any grading companies for that matter so you start looking at the you know the investment you make early and then the return that you get afterwards if the card hits the uh, grade that you want and now you're talking about you know the value of of psa becomes way higher and um it's going to be interesting to watch but i think something's going to be happening soon and we're gonna we're gonna hear about it we're gonna talk about it and um, we'll see if it shifts the hobby, like we've talked about on previous shows. Does that change the wax business again? Are people going to buy boxes and you know look for the cards that they can easily get graded again cheaply? And it's just, uh, yeah, it, it it what happens at PSA is going to dictate a lot of what the hobby does over the next several months slash years. And so um, you know, it's a lot of power for one company to have, but. Um, if you play it right, and if you're paying attention, you know there's some opportunities, real opportunities to make money. And I think one of the things that you know, if you're if you're listening to this and you're like, what should I be doing now? I think the idea, Chris, you and I have talked about it many times in the show, is have your pile of cards that you want to get graded, because as soon as they open that up, man. The floodgates are going to open and you better be ready because your cards are going to fall behind really quickly. So, you know, get ready for that, uh, that, that opening of the floodgates and be one of the first uh, through the gates. Yeah, that was exciting when they used to have the quarterly specials. And we had talked about that before on, the, on this show. Man, you're just sitting there waiting for that quarterly special to come through and it's time to start sorting, you know, just kind of <laughs> fun. It was just fun to, to try to get those orders out as quickly as you could to get it ahead of everybody else's quarterly special. You know what we should do? We should tag PSA on Twitter and just say, hey, are we close? And then yeah. send them a link to the show right. and see if they respond. Maybe they'll come on the show and they'll tell us everything that they have planned. I think that will definitely happen. Is that likely? <laughs> I um, guess we'll wait and see. We'll the way and, that they, and that's the thing that I love about PSA, too. Man, they're so secretive. How much would you love to get behind the scenes and just see their day to day work? Like, how awesome would that be? I mean, that's just like, be like a, a sneak peek inside the Pentagon. Like, yeah. they're not letting us in there ever. It, it actually, my guess is it'd look more like looking behind the curtain on the Wizard of Oz than behind the Pentagon. <laughs> it, it, it might be disappointing. You're, you're, you're unimpressed by it. <laughs> right. I just yeah. want to see, I just want to see how they handle my cards. Sure. From start to finish. That'd yeah. be interesting to me. It'd be fun. Because I do send them a lot of business. You, you definitely do. So uh, one more thing. I do want I, I, I thought of one more thing before we wrap this show up. What's going to be interesting as well is um, can you send cards through like your local hobby shop? Like when we talk about putting a limit on the number of cards. Mm -hmm. And so like, is that, it, will, will that still be there? And, and it's going to be up to PSA if they allow that to happen, if they want to collaborate with, you know, the local shops or do they look at it now and say, we don't need you guys like we used to. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, one of the, one of the ways that a lot of hobby shops got business mm -hmm. people in their door was um, to do that. So it'll be interesting to see if that, because there were some scandals with some, um, you know, bigger shops sending in cards. And so um, we'll see what PSA does about that as well. For sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. I hate to say this cliche, but uh, time will tell. It will. And All we'll right. talk about it when it does. We'll talk about when it does. Fellow shorty. All right. For Matt, I'm Chris. We'll talk to you and we'll see you on the next show.